Hi, I'm George Edmondson, and this is my trip down Sheepfoot Lane. George, you finally made it on your trip down to Sheffield Lane. We've been trying to get hold of you for a week. But uh, <laughs> tell us about how you got to Boundary Park, the beginning for George Edmondson. Oh, it's quite a, quite a long winded story. But, We've um, got 45 minutes, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, you know, I'd been on trial, you know, United, City, Everton, Burnley. Even Oldham when I was 13 or 14 and obviously every time it was the same answer, you know, like, oh, sorry, you're not as good of, as what we've got or it was either you know, physically not big enough, you're too small kind of thing. So I was obviously always got turned away and just went back to my Sunday league club and then I ended up going to City, but not the actual like under 16s team. It was like the, you know, like the, these top teams have like development squads. Yeah. So um, I went and that's where I met Simon Cooper. He was like the, the coach there. So obviously it was every Monday, I used to go down and we used to play quite a few teams, but the whole aim of the development squad there was obviously to get them into the under 16s at City and signed on. But if they thought, oh, you're probably not good enough for City at that time, they would invite scout, scouts down and their aim was to, if you can't get in City, we want you to go on and try and sign at other clubs. So um, the Accrington Stanley scout come down and said, you know, like, oh, we like the look of this George. Would you would he be able to? And Coops was at Accrington as well at the time, as well as doing this coaching at City. So um, obviously Coops said to me after one of the training sessions, they want you to go down and what have you. So I did, and I ended up going, and I got signed for the best part of two weeks. And because it was at around the time when they were giving, you know, scholarships out. Yeah. Uh, so I got signed on the under 16s, I was there for two weeks. And then at the end of the two weeks, they said, oh, we're not giving you a scholarship. So obviously I said, nice. so obviously I was gutted and what have you. So I ended up going back, playing from a Sunday league team. And <clears throat> I was going to go and sign at Altrincham FC. They were doing a youth uh, academy thing with like your college work and stuff. So I was going to go and sign there. And then, obviously, Coops had moved to Oldham by this time. And obviously, Roy, you'll know, like, the, in the youth team setup, when the lads are getting given, like, the pro contracts in the youth team, it was the year what, like, Jack Trulove had just been... Uh, he'd gone with, his, gone with the first team. Danny Gossett had just been given his pro. So we went with the first team and a few others for the last game of the season. So... The ones who didn't get given pro contracts didn't want to play the last game of the season. So Coops rang me. Obviously, he knew I hadn't um, been given one at Atkinson and said, oh, do you want to come and play, obviously, a game of football? Obviously, I love football and what have you. So I said, oh, go on then, why not? So it was against Walsh all the way and they needed a centre-half. They didn't have enough players because, you know, the players had left because they hadn't had pros. And I think a few of the first, the under-16s going into the first year were injured. So they needed some players. So Coops rang me and said, yeah, game of football, put me down. So I went and played and we beat Walsall 2, was it 2-0? Uh, we ended up beating them 2-0 and they were top of the league, actually. So at the end of the game, obviously Coops said, you know, Thanks for helping us out and what have you. But unfortunately, we give all the scholars out here. So I said, oh, like, no worries, Coops. Tony Phillipscoat wasn't there at the... He was, I think, away watching the lads who were with the first team. And Mick Priest was there. It was him and Coops. And they said, like, you've done fantastic, but obviously there's no scholarship. So I said, oh, I wasn't expecting one. I've just come down to help, you know, Coops out and it's a game of football. So you're obviously not going to turn it down. So then that was it. Obviously, shook their hands and went back home. 
Thank so, you, Sunday League team. Yeah, yeah, carried on playing after the season was coming to an end at Sunday League. Is this Sunday League team that you're playing for? Which one was it? Yeah. Oh, they called the uh, Unicorn. Season. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, the season was finishing there. And then, so like I said before, I was going to go and play for Old Chungham's youth team and done the trial and what have you. They'd give me a, like a scholarship thing there for their like little setup. And they put me in the second team. I didn't even get in the first team at the youth team level. And then, you know, it come to like July and what have you. And Oldham had started back like pre-season. And there was a lad to the, give a scholarship to called Ellis Gordon, who I've actually, who I actually know. And uh, I've played with him when we were kids and played against him loads of times. And very good footballer, but his attitude's not the best. So two weeks into pre-season, uh, for some reason, they obviously, they let him go. So it was like a Thursday and Ellis played like centre-half and Coops rang my mum and just said like, oh, we've let this lad go two weeks into pre-season. Obviously, his attitude's not not right and what have you. So we've ended up like sacking him and Coop said there's a space and we need a centre-half. Does, does George want it? So I was quite fortunate, really, to get my scholarship. Well, you persevered, didn't you? I know, I know. But that's it. It's one of them if I'd, uh, when Coop rang and said, oh, do you want to go and play, you know, the game at Walsall? <clears throat> I think, obviously, most lads probably might not have might not have gone, you know, it's no, no. a no. couple of hours away. He would have probably yeah. gone, oh, nah, I'm not playing that on a Thursday. I'd rather play Xbox with my mates. But obviously, I just love football. So I thought, you know what, I might as well. And my whole thing I was saying to my mum when Coops asked for me to go and play, obviously, <clears throat> it was, I knew nothing, I wasn't going to get anything at the end of it. But, you know, I said, I might never get to play, like, say, youth team football, you know, ever in my life. So it's, it'll be good. You know, experience for me. Mm. And, you know, I can yeah. start played youth team level. So you was there another? Well, you did two years, did you? Yeah. So obviously, Coops rang me. Obviously, I couldn't believe it. I was playing my Xbox at the time when my mum come running in. <laughs> um, and obviously, the scholarships two years, two years long. So yeah, I did my two years there. Uh, so how long did it take you to break into the first team? Um, it took me a few few seasons. Obviously, I got my pro, um, which is another story in itself. Yeah. yeah. How many loans did you go out on during that time? I went on three. I went to Ramsbottom in my first year, I think in Evo Stick. Then I went to the following season, I went to Alfredson Town. Ah, you did. And then in my third season, I went to File. File. Was Danny Rowe at File then? Yeah, he was, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, Johnny Smith there. Yeah, Johnny, Johnny. We had a good team at File. Very good team. Played some yeah. good as well. Johnny well, Smith. Neil, Neil Joy would be there by that time, was he? Yeah, I think he, he might have been the one actually who uh, put, a, put a word in for me with the gaffer there. And so yeah. uh, got me signed. Yeah, well, there you go. <clears throat> uh, so you finally broke into the first team. Uh, how did you find Tony Philliskirk? Do you, do you owe a lot to Tony Philliskirk and Coops and, and Priest? Yeah, well, I had in my first year scholarship, I had it was Tony Coops, Mick Priest, um, and then second year was Tony Coops and Pete Wilde. Oh. And, and Chris Millington coming more towards the end as well. But um, like I, I would, I've always said it, uh, Pete, all of them, Mick. Tony, Coops, Pete, Chris, you know, I probably wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't have them as my youth team coaches. You know, I owe. So your first full season mm. in the first team, how much of an influence was Peter Clark? Uh, massive, really. Yeah, massive. Um, obviously, I'd probably say I'm one of the lucky ones, you know, to play somebody along, like to play alongside him, who's had that much experience, and you know, it, obviously he's passed it down to me, and he kind of, I'd say, coached me through most of the games. You know, obviously helped me a lot. So I would say I'm very, you know, fortunate to have 
somebody of his experience next to him. He was the ultimate professional, wasn't he? Because yeah, exactly. You know, when you could say <laughs> the term "tit as a butcher's dog" because he <laughs> he, would, he he never stopped training, did he? Even in the uh, close season. No, no, he's you know everybody knows he's a a top professional. So for me to have him alongside me on my first full season, you know, I, I can't have asked for more really. So I think he's I owe a lot a lot to him as well. Yeah. Yeah, then towards the end of it all, you made the Division 2 team. I know. <laughs> <laughs> was that, that 2018-19 season? Uh, what year are we in now? I think it was. Yeah, it was last well, it would be. It was not long before you left, was it? And yeah, it was then you, went, you went to the awards in London to a swank, the Swanky Grosvenor Hotel, didn't you? <laughs> bit for me, it was. I didn't get an invite, by the way. That's per <laughs> usual. <But> there you go. <laughs> we have a bit of humour on this, you know. Okay. You used to when you used to do the press conferences for us on a Thursday <laughs> and completely wreck them. <laughs> that was my fault. That was Tom Amos and Jamie Stott's fault. But... <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I I would agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> And how's your mate doing, Emma? Does he still? Yeah, I still talk to him all. Story, Emma, Callum Lang, Sam. You know, even Callum the Lang. He, Callum Lang's come up your way, hasn't he? I think somebody was trying to get him. Was it Motherwell? Yeah, it's uh, it's who is it? Isn't it uh, Steve Robinson? Yeah, but obviously with the trouble they're having at the minute, I don't know. Then the offers started to come in, mm. didn't they? Some lower division clubs for a start. Peterborough was leading the the way at some time. There's somebody else as well, wasn't there? I can't quite remember who it was. Hull, I think it was. Who? Hull. Hull. Mm. Well, there you go. But uh, all, all all willing or allegedly to pay big money for you. Mm. Uh, this dragged on for quite some time. Uh, then in came Rangers. Uh, your eyes must have lit up with that. Yeah, obviously, you know, when Rangers come in for you, you don't, you don't say no. Well, well, you'd gone from uh, League Two, hadn't you, to uh, the Scottish Premiership. For once, all the athletics seemed to uh, get top dollar. They, they usually, no, seriously, they do, don't they? People come in, they come for hundred grand, and then they move on, and you know, lots of money is made. From yeah. what have you. But with you, and and to be fair to Abdella, he got a good deal, didn't he, for you, with the money going back into the club. To be fair, I didn't really. When it was going on, I obviously my focus is just on the pitch kind of thing. Oh yeah, it's well it would be. Obviously, I let other people deal with. All that kind of stuff. When you got to Rangers, you was only twenty-one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're old, and uh, would you say bought for the future at that time? Uh, yeah, probably. Obviously, um, where I've come from, as in Oldham. No disrespect to the league they're in. Obviously, it's no. Big, we're in League Two. Yeah, exactly. It's a big jump from League Two to Scottish Premiership. So Have you know. played in the North uh, when we won at um, Parkhead? I come on for the last four minutes it was all right <laughs> <laughs> well there you go it's, uh, we played in you played in the europa league haven't you yeah i played against the uh, braga away and by leverkusen at home right well that's not uh and are you playing league games? Are you in and out of the side with, through injuries? And you told me you've got about four centre halves, but at the moment you're down to three, aren't you? Yeah, um, obviously I knew when, you know, obviously Rangers is a massive club. So when, uh, obviously I've come up, obviously there's, we've got three quality centre halves with Nico, Connor Goldson and Philip. So um, they've done well this previous season. Um, and then at the start of the season, they were playing as well, so and we were winning games and what have you. So um, obviously they deserve to to keep the shirt. 
Yes, fair enough, isn't it? And uh, so you've been there a year now, getting more game time. And uh, are you still in Europe, by the way? Yeah, we've got the second leg of by Leverkusen to come up. Have you? Yeah, uh, so um, I'm not too sure when it is yet. I don't think it's been decided. No. Um, the uh, <coughs> Scottish season itself would normally start in August, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You'll be back in training now, won't you? Yeah, we've been back a couple of weeks now. A couple of weeks. Yeah. And you've just come back from France. We have, yes. <laughs> where you've <laughs> where you've played in a competition. How many yeah. teams were in that competition? Which you told me earlier was on a league basis, wasn't it? Yeah, we played a uh, Leon and Nice, it was. So yeah. um, both games two 0 so it was good, you know, to get away, and it was a, a good tournament. Obviously, good opposition. Yeah, and Celtic was in the same tournament. Yeah, yeah, they it, we obviously didn't play them. It was just uh, we played Leon and Nice. And what did they do? Did they play? Yeah, yeah, they, we all played the the same teams. Yeah. Did you? Right. So, uh, and who came out top of the league? Uh, we won both our our games, so we did. Did you know? And you, you played in them, Joyce, did you? Yeah, I played, I think I was one who got, like, most of the minutes. I played 17 against uh, Lyon, and then I played about 85 against Nice. Uh, well, uh, no, that's all right. And uh, one of your centre-backs is out injured now for some time, isn't he? Yeah, unfortunately, Nico. Yeah. Great lad, but he's uh, done his ACL, so obviously, um, but he'll come back, you know, fitter and stronger and what have you. So, of course he will. It's, uh, we can never tell with football, can you, George, what's thrown at you? Oh, no, it changes quickly, football, that's what I've learned. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's it like playing for uh, an England and Liverpool legend? Oh, no, it's class, you know, every day you're, you're learning <laughs> up there. You know, just being, even, you know, the players that you're training with just make you a 10 times better player. Obviously, training levels are a lot quicker, sharper. Everybody's that bit stronger. So, but it's only going to improve me. So, so it's good. It is. He's, he's done very well, Steve Gerrard, hasn't he? Because he's, he came to a club that really was just coming back. Mm. And within no time at all, he's up there c contending with... With Celtic, mm. yeah, which yeah. Obviously was suspended for some time, wasn't they, Rangers? Which was a bit daft, really. I think. What What's your away following like with Rangers? Honestly, really, it's unbelievable. <laughs> it's like it's like I should imagine it's like an old first team game, isn't it? Away from <laughs> home. Honestly, it's. Well, they do take about five thousand no, all the away. Well, some grounds, you know, will fill. We'll get two stands or three stands, you know, some games. Oh, every game's like a home game. Yeah. Because we take that any, honestly, everywhere. It could be in, I don't know, the other side of the world and they would still fill the stadium. Honestly, Roy, yeah. I didn't realise how, how good it is. <laughs> no, 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 it's something. They're a bit noisy as well, but more <laughs> Celtic and Rangers, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, it's good, it's good, very good. The, yeah. the fact. Well, we're due up. Uh, <laughs> probably be next season now with all this, but uh, I'll yeah. boot the ticket. I'm coming up. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do commentary on that one. Don't worry <laughs> about that. But, uh, now then, now, George, what's all this about your nickname that the fans have given you? Called Fridge. <laughs> I think Where it's just where this Fridge from. I don't actually know. It's from like one of the first games and they were just like, oh, he's massive. So we're going to call him the big fridge freezer. Did they? <laughs> well, somebody was telling me the other day, every time they mention you on social media, a fridge pops up. Is yeah, that right? Yeah, every time I tweet, somebody will do a little fridge picture or something. <laughs> well, I've been called worse, Roy, so... Pardon? So. I said I've been called worse, so it's not too bad. <laughs> well, yeah, haven't you? Well, it's, it's one of those things. It, um, 
But I saved that one right to the end for you because I nearly forgot it. I just turned my sheet over and at the top it's got George the Fridge. <laughs> so the fans have obviously taken to you because, you know, they haven't called you anything derogatory, have they, really? <laughs> I've made a few mistakes. The fridge <laughs> needs just a little bit of explanation, doesn't it, really? Yeah, it does. We're well, having a good time up there, George, and obviously progressing, aren't you? Yeah, I love it up here, honestly. Oh, it's, yeah. it's life changing. Uh, yeah. yeah. Have they had you in a kilt yet? Uh, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Is that New Year's Eve or New Year's Day? They'll have you in one of them, will you? <laughs> Probably both. <laughs> yeah. The old firm game, the main one, is on New Year's Day, isn't it, usually? No, around that time. Does your mum and dad come up to watch you from time to time? If I'm, de if I'm playing, my dad definitely comes up and my mum comes up when she can. And then yeah. If I'm on the bench, it depends what my dad's doing with work. What's so all this about training and then going to bed and sleeping oh. all day? That's what I'm on about, Roy. It's that tough training. I get over it? it and sleep. Honestly, try Mark and Jermaine Defoe. <laughs> <laughs> Why does he? Uh, is he up there? Yeah, he, he he's with us. But with Rangers, I remember him going. I thought he would might have disappeared. He, so he was on loan, and then he was free at the end of this the season, just gone. So they've signed him. Well, you so. can't at that level. You can't just turn up to training, can you? You've got to. <laughs> well, you can't. You, I'm not saying you did have told them, George. <laughs> I know. It, it gets well, very serious, doesn't it, when you, you're at a team that's in Europe and stuff like that. And I don't, I don't think a lot of the fans know just how much goes into it now. Yeah, it, it's, it's all science, isn't it? Yeah, you know, obviously, all of them do great. You know, obviously, with the where they are and, you know, what they can say, like afford to do, really. But um, you know, everything up here is monitored, and it's it's a bit crazy, really, in a good way. It is. Well, I think we'll end on that uh, <laughs> very high note, shall we say? And so, thanks very much, the fridge. <laughs> <laughs>